What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is another episode of the Never Seen It series where I give you my quick thoughts and opinions about movies I've never seen before in my entire life. Do I love them? Do I hate them? But most importantly, do I recommend them to you? There's always a best and there's always a worst. Everything else kind of just falls in between. So we're jumping right on in because I have over 20 horror films to talk about with you. Now also, I'm going to try to be as quick as possible because I do have over 20 movies to discuss in this video. So I don't want to go too long-winded. But I'm starting off with the best, as I always do. And out of all these movies that I'm about to share with you, The Descent was the cream of the crop. The Descent was the one I enjoyed the most. This is the main reason why I'm not too outdoorsy. I don't like going in random caves, not really knowing what I'm doing. Because in this movie, if you've never seen it, there's six female friends and they're, they're adventurous. They like to do things and they seek things out and they decide to go into a cave and they're like semi-professional. They have their equipment, they have their ropes. They kind of know what they're doing, kind of, sort of. And one of them is like leading the group and she decides to lead the group into this cave, this random cave that really no one else has been in before because she wants them to discover it. Bad idea. Okay, bad idea. She doesn't know how to get out of there. She sets up the group for complete and utter failure. And let me tell you something. There's one girl in this group that deserves to get something done to her. And by the end, she does. And I loved every second of it. I think what I really enjoyed about this movie the most is that it wasn't too horrific. There were the jump scares, yes, but it wasn't overly gross. I don't know. I For some reason, I thought this movie was like way grosser, way is grosser a word, more gory, more bloodier. I had a preconceived notion of this movie and I think that's why I never watched it before. It wasn't that bad. So I highly enjoyed this one. And like I said, the ending completely loved it because she deserved everything that she got. So The Descent, if you haven't seen it, put it at the top of your horror movie watching list. There we go. All right. Moving on next. This was very difficult to decide between The Descent and this movie for first place. The Visit. Believe it or not, The Visit from M. Night Shyamalan. I thoroughly enjoyed this movie, not only because of the twist that I did not see coming. I was waiting for it. The movie is going on. You have these two kids that are going to visit their grandparents. And so I'm waiting for the, and you could tell the grandparents are, are a little off. They're a little weird. And I'm sitting there and I'm waiting and I'm waiting. And because there's always a twist. There's always a twist in an M. Night Shyamalan movie. I'm waiting. I'm, I'm like, what is the twist? And when it's revealed, I'm like, oh my God, how did I not see that coming? So I love that because I truly did not see this twist coming. But besides the twist, the humor, the dialogue between the siblings in this movie, in particular, the little brother, I was laughing hysterically because just the way his part was written, the way the little kid was delivering the lines, I was laughing my butt off. So this was a great movie. It balances horror and comedy really well. Even though it's not a horror comedy, you're laughing in this movie because the way the dialogue is written and the way the actor delivers delivers the role. So this was a great watch as well. Highly enjoyed it. Kind of restored my faith in M. Night Shyamalan because he's had some clunkers. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking forward to watching other movies of his that I have not seen because I enjoyed the visit so much. So there you go. Okay. And right behind it, The Sixth Sense. Now, yes, I have seen The Sixth Sense before. Don't get me wrong. But when, I always explain this, when it's been at least like 15, 20 years since I've seen a movie, it goes into the never seen it. Because you're older, you perceive movies differently. And I haven't seen this film for at least 15 years. So this was a great rewatch for me. And it was, it was, it was just a plain good rewatch, especially with my mom, because my mom, I don't think she's ever seen the movie before. 
she's probably heard about the ending, but she forgets some things sometimes. So after the movie was done, I asked her, did you enjoy it? Did you see the twist coming? She was like, oh my God, no, I had no idea. So, you know, many years later, I guess the twist does live up. So that's nice to know. This one was a great revisit. I'm not going to go into too in depth with the sixth sense because we've all seen that one. Okay. The Lazarus effect. So this one kind of very similar to another movie called Flatliners, if you guys have ever seen it. I mean, this, this, this walks the same tightrope as Flatliners. You have, what's her name? Olivia Wilde. I confuse her with another actress all the time. Olivia Wilde, Mark Duplass, they're like the head scientists of this little group, and they discover how to bring people back from the dead like with flatliners, except they're not using each other. Olivia Wilde accidentally passes away during one of their experiments that they were doing. And so they decide to rush their decision to bring her back. They should have thought two seconds before they did it because she comes back. Not okay. She, she has so much power. She is not herself. I mean, look at her. <laughs> look at this face. Look at the eyes. I mean, she's just off the rails, off the rails with power. And it's just the only complaint I have this movie with this movie. There we go. Is that it's a little bit too short because the runtime for this is 83 minutes. And I feel like once she gets to her full power, they kind of just end it really quickly. There's no like exploration into that further. So that's my only real complaint. This isn't a movie I'm gonna grab all the time, but I highly enjoyed watching it for the first time. But like I said, it's just very familiar to another classic film, which is Flatliner. So, I mean, if I wanna watch a movie that's like this, I'll choose Flatliners over this one, but I enjoyed watching it. Okay. Bone Collector. Some people don't consider this a horror film. I consider it to be one. It rides that line like Silence of the Lambs and Seven. It's like a psychological horror film. So I consider it to be in the, in the horror category. Other people do not, but I do. This was a great revisit. Again, haven't seen it for a really, really long time. Angelina Jolie's in this movie. Beginning of her career. Denzel's amazing in this. We're following a serial killer that is kidnapping people and he's killing them in a certain way. And it's all, I just love stories like this, how it just unravels and reveals itself and clues are discovered. It's such a great movie. So I highly recommend it. Had a great time watching it and I thought it lived up. I really, really do. I, I mean, it, it didn't seem like it was an older film. It just, it seemed like it could have been made today. So I loved rewatching The Bone Collector. The next movie I'm going to talk about is another psychological thriller slash horror film, and it is called Shut In, starring Naomi Watts. Now, in this movie, when it first starts, we get her personal backstory with her husband and her son. Something tragic happens to kick off the movie. Then we get into present day. She's a child psychologist. She's, she's interested in helping one client in particular. Unfortunately, he ends up going missing, and for some reason... She thinks that she sees him in her home. Her home is very isolated. It's dead of winter. That's the setting in this movie. Very much like The Shining, like Shining vibes, like that kind of winter time where a massive snowstorm is coming in. Her home is isolated off the main road. And she feels like this child is in her house or his ghost or something. And you're trying to put the pieces together and then the twist is revealed and it's borderline sick. And I don't think I've ever mentioned that or said that about any other movie where the twist is just sick, like borderline sick. At least I thought that it, I thought that it was. If you've seen this movie, feel free to send me a message or <laughs> on like Twitter or Instagram or something like that at Movies and Sue and let me know your thoughts because I personally thought it was borderline inappropriate, but you know what? We all have different opinions. 
It's not a movie I would like regularly go regularly go for. There we go. But if there was like a massive snowstorm outside, I would go for this movie because the setting of that of this film would match what was going on outside. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Massive snowstorm, a cup of hot cocoa, and shut in. It could be a good time. Who knows? So I don't really know if I can, rec I, I mean, I would recommend it. It's not like super sick or it's just weird. It's weird. All right. Speaking of weird, the Critters Collection, all four movies. I watched all four Blu-rays in this box set of Critters. This is just cheesy fun. I'm not going in depth into this. The Critters films, they're they're just stupid. They're stupid, cheesy, good fun. I mean, you have the first movie that sets up everything. Then you have the second film that's pretty much the first film set during Easter. And then you have the third film starring Leonardo DiCaprio. There you go. An Oscar winner is in Critters 3, yes. And Critters 4 not only has Angela Bassett, but it's in space. So that's that's it. That's all you got to say. That's all you have to say about the Critters box set. Like I said, this is not so like deep that I'm going to go in depth about the Critters movie. So if you like cheesy Velveeta, all over the nacho plate, good fun, Critters. Critters box set. I picked this up during the Scream Factory sale, and that's when everyone should pick this up because you don't need to pay full price for this. You don't have to watch these, only if you like really, really stupid, dumb, fun movies. All right, let's move on to The Retaliators. Okay, I watched this so long ago, I need to like refresh my brain really quickly, <laughs> really, really quickly. I feel like this movie was like all over the place. I felt like it, it couldn't really find the tone or vibe that it wanted to go with. There's a murder, there's revenge, there's kidnapping, there's blood, it's gore. Like there's so, there's so many things happening in this one movie. The way it starts off doesn't really match up with the rest of the tone and the vibe of the entire film. It wasn't constructed very well. Is that the editor's fault? Probably. I, I don't know. There was just so many different directions this movie was going in. I mean, it was only like $12.99, I think. Don't pay more than that. If you can find this on streaming, if it's on like Shudder or Tubi or something like that, if you're interested in watching this, stream it. You don't have to pick this one up. I can't say that I highly recommend The Retaliators to you. Okay. Haunt. I never enjoyed going into haunted houses. And this movie shows you why, okay? Like there's a reason I don't go into haunted houses. So of course you have a group of teenagers that are out for, I think it's on Halloween night, something like that. They're going, or it's, it's around that time of the year, obviously. And they decide to go into this random haunted house and worst mistake of their lives because they think that the, these sketches and the things that are happening are fake and they're not, they're actually real. And now they're stuck inside this haunted house and they're trying to get out of it. And every single which way they try to go, they're blocked, they're kept in. It's frightening. This, mo this movie's scary. It's not overly scary, but it just confirms why I don't do stuff like this. I'm a very boring person. And you know what? Because of that, I will live to be 106 years old because I don't do crazy shit like this. Okay? Just saying. Sorry that I swore. I won't do it again. <laughs> but overall, I enjoyed the movie and I recommend that you watch it too. Okay. Now we're doing, we're doing a double at one time because it's all Hallow's Eve and Terrifier 2. So we might as well talk about both of them because they star the same main character, which is Art the Clown. So starting off with All Hallows Eve, this is our first introduction to the character of Art the Clown. Now this one was just okay for me. And the reason why the first Terrifier movie isn't in here, I've already seen that one. I'd seen that one previously. Out of the three, that's the one I prefer because I feel like the first Terrifier movie is exactly right, spot on, perfect. It's the perfect length. There's just enough, just enough gore 
and blood and creepiness in that movie. All Hallows Eve, I felt, was a little bit boring and slow. There wasn't enough in All Hallows Eve. So then we get Terrifier, and that's perfect. And then we get Terrifier 2, which I thought was so over overly done. So overly done. Not only in running time at two and a half hours, but also with the amount of gore and blood and grossness and how many body parts we can cut off and how gnarly we can be. Like it was just over the top in so many ways. I'm really hoping with Terrifier 3, you guys haven't heard, Terrifier 3 is coming and it's going to be a Christmas movie, which I'm really looking forward to that theme. I like holiday horror films. I said it. Woo, all right. I'm hoping they kind of draw it back a little bit. Not a lot. It just doesn't need to be so over the top. There were a lot of scenes in Terrifier 2 I thought we did not need. And that's the reason why it was two and a half hours. I feel like they shot everything and they just jam-packed every single scene into the movie. I felt like they didn't cut anything at all whatsoever. A horror film does not need to be two and a half hours long. It was just way too long for me. So I'm really crossing my fingers here, hoping Terrifier 3 brings it back like Terrifier, the perfect balance at Christmas time. Ooh, I'm hoping I'm looking forward. Okay. Because with that, when it's too overly done, I don't want to watch it all the time. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I just, I, just, I can't do all that gore for two and a half hours because the entire time I'm like this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just too much. All right, let's move on. Gretel and Hansel. What? This this movie was so boring. So, so, and I have a couple of boring movies in my stack. This movie was so boring. And I feel bad saying that because someone sent this to me. They thought of me and they sent it my way. But this, this one just was, why am I red all of a sudden? I feel like the, the red and the slip cover is like rubbing off on me. What are you doing to me just because I don't like you? It was just very slow and very boring. And to be honest, sometimes I didn't even know what was happening. What what was going on? Like, what was the point of this? It was just not my cup of tea. I don't ha really have anything positive to say about it. And I certainly don't recommend it to you. So don't pick this one up. You don't need it. I'm probably going to get rid of it because I just don't think I'll ever watch it again. So what's the point? All right, now we have the double pack of Jeepers Creepers and Jeepers Creepers Part 2. So Jeepers Creepers, I talked about before. I've seen it before. So we're only discussing Part 2. Part 2. So this one was okay. I still feel Part 1 better than Part 2. And I feel like the main reason for that is because, again, this movie was a little bit boring to me because of the one location on the school bus. It's like all the kids are trapped inside the school bus because you got the creeper here. He's, you know, creeping around and he wants to get you. And they're all inside the school bus and that's the only place that they're safe. So imagine an hour and a half movie just on a school bus. Like it, it just, it wasn't that entertaining. Not as entertaining as part one. Were there any major stars in part two? I don't think so. And I also think that that hurt the movie as well. Because at least in part one, you had Justin Long. You know, like you had someone recognizable. And plus, I don't think I was ever really rooting for anyone. Like, yes, I want this person to survive. I didn't really care. And that's not good in a horror movie. You know, like you want to be able to root for someone, have them live, you know, to live on for the next movie, for the sequel. And then they can get their, you know, whatever. But... That didn't happen here. So this one was just okay. It wasn't the worst. It's not the best. It falls into the middle. Ghosts of Mars by John Carpenter. What was he on when he made this movie? Can I ask, are there big fans of Ghosts of Mars? I'm just curious because the entire story of this movie, I feel is just like, again, it's been a while since I've seen this. So I'm trying to like refresh my brain. It takes place, it takes place in the future of 2025. It's 
two years away. <laughs> it does have Jason Statham in it. So, you know, that's always, a yeah, Jason Statham was like, very sexual in this movie for Natasha Henstridge, our lead character here. I mean, what is happening? I forgot the plot line of this movie, and that's not good. I think they're going to pick up Ice Cube's character. Yeah, Ice Cube, right? Yeah, Ice Cube's character. He's in prison. He's getting a transfer or something. And so they go to pick him up. And when they go to do that, they get attacked by some people. Like, that's what this is. That's, I mean... Obviously, it's not the most memorable movie because I don't even remember what this movie was about. All I remember is Jason Statham being overly sexual and who wouldn't remember that? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, Pam Greer's in there. I, I didn't even remember Pam Greer. I think she was in it for like two seconds and that's it. So I would probably put this on the lower end of a John Carpenter ranking if I had to rank all the John Carpenter films. This would be towards the bottom because I just don't even remember it. I don't remember the plot. Another time to take a nap. Nosferatu. And I feel bad. I feel bad, bad in saying that because this is like the OG of vampire films. Nosferatu. Like I was excited to pick this up. I tried watching this two separate occasions and both times I fell asleep completely this is a silent movie that's part of the reason why <laughs> because there's literally no sound so you have to stay awake otherwise you're going to bed <laughs> you know like you're just gonna miss out on everything so with Nosferatu I'm gonna have to give it another chance when it's like two o'clock in the afternoon I'm wide awake I have no chance of falling asleep at all whatsoever and just really focus in on it, you know, because I like my vampire movies and I want to give this a chance. I mean, he looks cool, you know, but I, I, I got to watch it earlier. I can't watch this one late at night. So I don't know if I can recommend that to you. If you're easy to fall asleep during movies, then no, I can't recommend that to you. All right. We have a few more, including the bottom of the barrel. What do you guys think it is? Okay. It's not... The Firefly Trilogy, I'll tell you that much. So House of a Thousand Corpses, I have seen before. I actually enjoyed House of a Thousand Corpses, believe it or not. Even though I do have my thoughts and opinions about Rob Zombie and, you know, certain movies of his. But in this trilogy of what I had not seen, Three from Hell and also The Devil's Rejects. So I can't remember, which one is the last one? Devil's Rejects? I think so. The third movie in the trilogy, I thought was really boring. Again, another boring film. It just felt like it did not belong with the other two movies. Because with the other two movies, you have, you know, the family going nuts. And, cra and can I just say, I always had, again, this preconceived notion of this trilogy. I mean, don't get me wrong. A lot of bad things happen in this trilogy. A lot of messed up bad, weird things happen. But for some reason, I thought it was way worse than what I saw. So I could actually tolerate these movies. No problem. Am I building up a tolerance? Maybe I am. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. But it wasn't as gory and graphic as I thought it was going to be. Okay. Like there's a different scene in a different movie that bothers me way more than whatever happened in, in this trilogy. But with the third movie of the trilogy, I think it's Devil's Rejects, I thought it was really boring. Really, really boring. And also, like, why at the end am I rooting for them? You're not supposed to be rooting for them. <laughs> You're not supposed to be rooting for them to get away. And I kind of was. So that's a little bit messed up, Rob Zombie. But I know that's probably your intention. You want us to root for them, but you don't really want to with how horrible they are. So... I dealt with these movies just fine. If I can, anyone can. Trust me. All right. Pet Cemetery remake. I believe this was what? From 2019? Something like that. Um, so this one pretty much does follow the story of the original Pet Cemetery, except for a few key differences here and there. The biggest difference, I guess I'll spoil this, but this movie's from 2019, so if you haven't seen it yet, 
that's on you. But I'm giving you a warning. Here's your warning. I'm spoiling it. So in the original film, it is the son, the toddler, that gets killed and gets buried in the pet cemetery. In the remake, it's the daughter. So the roles are reversed. The roles are flipped. And so the daughter gets killed in the movie and she gets buried in the pet cemetery and comes back. And she's freaking crazy and out of her gosh darn mind. I didn't mind the movie. I actually didn't. You can't really... The original Pet Cemetery is so iconic. I've said this before. It's on a different level of horror films. It's very difficult to live up to. So to even think about making a remake of that film, you're pretty brave. And I gotta say, they did a decent job. It's not in the same realm as the original, but I will give them credit for trying something different especially at the very end. The very end kind of leaves you like, oh my God, what's like, what's happening right now? And then it just ends. So yeah, it, it, it's not iconic. It's not on the level of the original film. It's not like that. I know some people absolutely hate this movie because I've heard different opinions about the remake, but I didn't mind it. But I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a hardcore fan of the original film. So that's probably the reason why I don't mind this one. I actually enjoyed this one for what it was. So I give him credit for trying something different and going outside the box a little bit. Okay. Another weird ass John Carpenter movie, Prince of Darkness. So you have Donald Pleasance in this movie. Dr. Loomis from the Halloween franchise, but he's a priest in this movie. Can I just tell you, side note, with Donald Pleasance in a priest or, you know, in a priest outfit in this film, it kind of made me want him to be in The Exorcist for some reason. Like, I wanted to see what, what he would have done in The Exorcist. But anyway, stupid thought, but it just came to my brain. So this movie is all about you have Donald Pleasance, then you have this other character that is a professor at a university, and he gathers up like the best of the best of the students at the university. They're all like science majors, physics, psychology, like all this brainy, brainy stuff. Okay, bra brainiac stuff. Gets all the best students at the school. Other people get involved as well. And there's like this, <laughs> I don't even know. There's like this... <laughs> cylinder of green goo like in a church and apparently it is is it the devil is it it's it's just evil it's like liquid evil in a jar <laughs> what like wanting to take over everyone that's in this church and it's that's all they're doing they're they're trying to evade the liquid evil that's green right <laughs> john carpenter what are you taking? What are you smoking? Because I want to know what it is. I want to know what it is when he comes up with these ideas. Because he wrote this, right? <laughs> Maybe he didn't write this. I don't know. It was written by someone else, but he directed it. I mean, this movie is weird. It is so weird and so strange. So I kind of just went with it. And after it was done, mom and I looked at each other and were like, Wow. Okay. That was it. We just said, wow. And we moved on with our lives. So this would probably be, I don't know if it's above ghosts of Mars, but it would definitely be towards the bottom of the John Carpenter directed movies, because this is just so strange and off the wall. You don't need this. You don't need this in your collection at all whatsoever. It's not a John Carpenter classic like Halloween or they live or uh, I almost said scream or, or that's how distracted I am or any of those Christine or any of those other, it's not like that at all. You don't need this. So you can bypass on Prince of Darkness. Strange. It is so strange, strange and weird, but it is not the bottom of the barrel that is reserved for a different film. A lot of you wanted to know my reaction to this movie. This was sent my way from a subscriber. Let me just first say I appreciate anything that comes my way, but I'm not going to enjoy everything. 
And this, I did not enjoy at all whatsoever. The house that Jack built. So this is Matt Dillon playing a serial killer and reading the description. I'm like, hey, I'm into this. Matt Dillon going off the rails, being a serial killer. Okay. The runtime of this is almost two. No, it's over two hours. It's almost two and a half hours. It's 151 minutes. That is crazy long. Again, for a horror film, they do not need to be this long. Pretty much it's Matt Dillon killing people in five different vignettes of the movie. I believe it's five. And it's just extended so much. I was so bored watching this movie. It was unbelievable. How am I going to be bored watching a serial killer on screen? Like, how does that, how do you make a serial killer boring? Lars Von Tier, the director of this, I don't even know who this is. I don't even think I've ever seen anything that Lars Von Tier has ever done before, but I did not enjoy this movie at all whatsoever. It was too long. It was too boring. And I'm sorry, Matt Dillon as a serial killer, that should be way more exciting. How do you make that boring? I just don't understand. So I do not recommend this at all whatsoever. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. Don't, just don't. Don't pick it up. So you know what's going to happen, right? It gets tossed on the bed. <laughs> not across the room onto the bed. So that is everything that I have been watching lately. So comment down below and let me know your thoughts about any of these movies that I just discussed. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave and I'll see you next time.